something like a little Chicago to set the mood for what's to come. It's only the beginning, ladies and gentlemen. However, all's well that ends well. And with that being said, we'll get this segment started off with my main man coming at you right here. It's the one, it's the only, T. Boss. Good morning, Mr. Williams. And it is only the beginning Friday Eve. What a great song. There was a point in my life, uh, myself and a special someone went to see Chicago at their 50th anniversary at Oakdale. And uh, that song played and all the people in Oakdale were sitting down, but there were two people dancing like crazy to that song right in the center aisle. So uh, great memory of that song. Welcome in, everyone. Come on in. Come on in. As you're coming in there, George is handing you a, a little rock, a hand-sized rock. That's okay. Just take that and put it on your desk, chair, wherever you're sitting. Come on in. We have a lot of ground to cover today. Thank you, Jock, for having me on. And thank you again, Jock, for letting me do this uh, three-part series about emotional healing and share my life with the audience. And uh, this was a suggestion of a good friend. Come on in. Come on in. Uh, thankful Charlie, who thought that uh, this would work as a great three-part series. So thank you, Thankful Charlie. So yes, yes, we have plenty of pens and papers, plenty of seats. We need a couple more rocks. Okay, bring them in, bring them in. Uh, those rocks that you're all getting, you just put them on your desk, hang on. And there's a piece of tape underneath there. We are going to have an exercise in the second half of the broadcast, and George and I will guide you through the whole thing, and uh, it's going to be very... Um, very uh, revealing as to the theme of the show. So because we have a lot of ground to cover, remember National Day of Prayer today down at Cove Park, I believe at 4 o'clock. Let's get right over to the guy who doesn't know which is uh, the yellow cap or the blue cap is 2%. Milk, Stan, Stan, an inside joke, boys and girls. Stan, Stan, the coffee man. And what do we have in the big silver pot today? Wow, passionate blend. Yes, we picked that up at Holy Family Retreat Center. The Passionists, they do have uh, fair trade coffee there. And uh, we picked up the Passionate and Stan put it in the pot. And those of you who are at the concert, I tell you every year, whatever you have planned, cancel it. The Holy Family Easter concert and Christmas concert is the very best. And what do we have? Wow, Passionate brownies, sugar-free. Fantastic. And then we have the tea and fruit and everything else. And who sponsors this, Stan? Back in home up in Winstead, those of you who love jazz, get up there when the jazz is there on Thursday night, second home in Winstead. Actually, the owners' names are Sean and Sarah, and they do a great job for us, great food, great music, and all of that. So we have a lot of ground to cover, so I'm moving through the opening. Let's get right over to the format. All right, those of you who have been following along the last three weeks, you can go on archives. Uh, I think the first one may still be there. It might get bumped off after today. I can't control that. But our format, we are talking about emotional healing. I've been sharing about events in my life. And uh, like I said, thankful Charlie thought this would be great for other people listening in. Those of you on Zoom, everybody wave to Zoom people. You won't be able to participate in our exercise today, but just follow along at home. Those of you listening in the car and on the radio, just follow along. So our first segment was trusting and acceptance, okay? As you go through emotional healing, we talked about trusting in God. We talked about accepting uh, the events that happened. We all, often talked about trusting in God, and really, if your trust has been affected in the situation you've been in, that's okay. Hopefully, over time, that will heal. But we discussed that in the first segment, uh, not only trusting in God, but um, what happens when you trust too much in our fellow men and women. Uh, last week, we talked about ruminating and getting professional therapy. Ruminating, if you remember, was the um, practice of looking at something or thinking about something over and over again. We went to that in depth. We talked about getting professional therapy, and we used a great quote last year. Everyone called, and they loved it, by the Buddhists, and it said, hatred is like drinking poison, expecting the other person to die. So we really worked on hatred and all of that. Today is the big one. This is the one that I think most of us, including yours truly, has stumbled on and kind of got his foot caught in the in the in the 
in the corner a little bit with this, but it's topic today is no guarantees and forgiveness. And a lot of you who are going through events, maybe you've been widowed, uh, maybe a, a broken romantic relationship, maybe a business relationship, uh, but um, there are no guarantees and forgiveness. These two, I save them for the end because these are the toughest. They were the toughest for me, and I'm only human, and they're toughest for most of you. So let's find out how we can get to those. We're going to start off with none other than Victor Hugo. I know we're not starting with a psalm today. Victor Hugo says love is the only future that God offers. Boom. So we start out with a big one there. A lot of us, we want guarantees. Oh, God, I want healthy children. God, I want a long-term romance. God, I want this. God, I want that. The only future that God has that he offers is love. Because with love, true love, okay, we're going to talk about that at the very end of the show. True love gets us through all the crap. So the only future that God offers is love. All right. And with that love that he offers us is how we can overcome the pains and the heartaches and the things uh, that trouble us. First Timothy chapter four, verse eight through 10 says this, for this we labor in the living. Oh, I'm sorry. For this we labor. Our hope is in the living God. Boom. So for this, we labor our hope, our trust. We talked about that at segment one. Our trust should only be and always be in the living God. And I love what it says there, living God. Some of us think the Bible is 2,000 years ago, and that's all nice and tidy in a box somewhere on a shelf. Wrong. It is a living God. The God that rose from the dead, the God that taught the apostles, the God that spoke to Abraham is just alive to you today as he was then. Don't make the mistake thinking that it was back a long time ago. Okay, so Timothy tells us we labor and our hope, our trust, is in the living God. Here's a statement. The only thing that is guaranteed to us in this life is death. Now, to some of you, that may sound a little depressing. And people say taxes. No, because you cannot pay your taxes. They'll throw you in jail. But you don't have to pay them. They'll take your house if you have to. The only thing guaranteed to us in this life is death. And a lot of us go into relationships thinking it's guaranteed. We're going to talk about me in a minute. And we think that, oh, you know, because we did this, it's guaranteed. There are no guarantees. I don't care who you're with. I don't care if you're married 53 years, 63 years, 10 minutes. Be joyful in the moment you have in front of us. We're going to talk about that, too, in a minute. All right. Chris Cornell, a uh, songwriter, unfortunately died in 2017. He was born in, um, in 1964. Chris Cornell says this. There is no guarantee that the more time you spend or the more you concentrate on certain aspects that it's going to produce better results. Boom. And that was me. I can only share me, boys and girls. I like to be transparent on this show. So Chris Cornell, and he's talking about songwriting, but it goes perfect with our theme today, guarantee. Some of us think that if we put more in, we get more out. No, you put more in, you put the love in, expecting nothing in return. Our God tells us to love one another. What happens to that love once you send it out is not your responsibility. You give that love freely and hopefully. What happens to it is and if it gets diluted, it has nothing to do with you. So just because you put a lot of time in, just because of you think you're doing all the right things, there are no guarantees. And if you go into life, relationships, business, anything, hoping for the best, but not thinking because you're you, you get a guarantee, you'll be better off. Let's talk about me. Guarantees. In the relationship I was in, I had built a wall. So high with bricks of love, with bricks of compassion, with bricks of passion, with bricks of respect, with bricks of interest, with bricks of time, with bricks of service, with bricks. I had built a wall so high that I thought the person on the other side would feel so secure and so loved 
that they would never want to go beyond that wall. And I also thought, because I built that wall, that another man could never get over it. I was wrong. There are no guarantees. It raises the chances of bad things happening, but it doesn't guarantee. And I was sure, as the sun is shining today, that my love and my dedication would guarantee me a future. And so we learn lessons through life. We look down and we see this... um, Oh, we look we look down and we see this statement here and it says God allows challenges to elevate us to increase our ability to survive challenges are never meant to destroy our hope or our resiliency and if you remember back when I went to Washington Bell Bullock would said our spirit is bent but never broken my spirit is not broken my hope in some day doing a relationship again is not broken. So when challenges come our way, God does not put those in our life to beat us down, but to build us up. I, in some ways, and I shared this with a listener before airtime, have changed in a negative way. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm more guarded. I'm a little more cynical, and I'm not as trustworthy. I'm not as trusting. That's the truth. If there's people in the audience that don't like it, you're going to get the real buzz here on this show. That's why Jock says to me all the time, you're authentic. But in other ways, I have learned to love as God loves and sees as God sees. And you'll see that at the second half of the show. And I've learned to accept as God has learned to accept. So though there have been changes on the negative side, there have been changes in me on the positive side. Anything happens to us, comes through the filter of God. There is no guarantee of tomorrow. So that tells me to see the good things in today. Boom. I just lost a a buddy of mine. Well, not someone I was totally in touch with, but a classmate. He's my age. He was here at the beginning of the week, and he's gone in the middle of the week. Like that. Boom. Boom. We all say, hey, see you next week. See you at the ball game. See you tomorrow. The only thing you have is right now. And some of us say to people, we'll get together someday. We'll have coffee someday. I'm going to get together someday. Someday is not a day on the calendar. There's no guarantees. When we went to Rio Beach, I said to my sister, you know what was nice about this trip? It wasn't a funeral. Too many times we get together at funerals. What we all have to do in this classroom, boys and girls, is start getting together for the nice days, the days like today, the celebratory days. Even if it's not someone's birthday or a wedding or an anniversary, just get together with people. Don't wait. There are no guarantees. I thought there was, but I've learned learned differently. We look at Ecclesiastes, and it's going to sum up our guarantee section of the talk, and it says this, chapter 9, verse 11, the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor knowledge to the wise, but time and chance will happen to them all. Bing, bang, boom. What is Ecclesiastic saying? Doesn't matter if you're strong. Doesn't matter if you're wise. Doesn't matter if you're rich. Doesn't matter. What matters is that there are no guarantees. It's going to happen to people who you think it's not going to happen to, but it will. There are no guarantees. We as Christian people have to learn to appreciate the moment in front of us, the God in front of us. That's what we have to, we have to relish. Like I said in our opening statement by Victor Hugo, love is the only future that God offers. And First Timothy, we put our faith in the living God. You guys got to focus on that. I think a lot of us in the room think, you know, spirituality happened 2,000 years ago. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. It's happening right now in the classroom. We're at 1130, and so why don't we get into the uh, sponsors? Because that puts us perfectly in line for the forgiveness part of the show. 
Go ahead, Jack. And Mr. Williams, I think, is probably uh, making a business call or something. Jock, are you still there? All right. Then I'm, I'm here. Um, oh, I can see from up here. He's signing autographs again. <laughs> well, let's take this opportunity to thank our sponsors for allowing us to bring you the quality community radio programming that we're doing at this time. And uh, we want to encourage each and every one of you uh, to participate uh, in the activities that are taking place here at WAPJ, especially on Thursdays for our local and live segment, feel free to call us and contact us. If you want to promote your business, your activities, just uh, let us know and we'll be more than happy to, uh, to hook that up for you. In the meantime, we'll return the floor back to t Boz for more words of wisdom and moments of meditation. Thank you, Jack. I want to jump back to one thing about the wall. Wall may not be the right word, but the wall I built. I have no regrets. I have no regrets. I gave, as God says, love with your mind. It says love God with your mind, your soul, and your heart. That's what I did. I have no regrets of the wall that I built. So let's move on to forgiveness. And um, we have a great... Uh, thing here from a new listener. Her name is Julia. She's an aquatic therapist, so she does therapy, but in water with her clients. A very interesting, wonderful person that Barbara and Stan and I met. Uh, so Julia says this, it takes, because a lot of you are going through this emotional healing, you guarantees, you're saying, gee, I did what I could. I did what I wanted. What happened? Okay. We talked about no guarantees. So this is what Julia says. It takes time to go from fragility, which is fragile, right? Fragility to resiliency. And I love what she says here. Honor how you feel. In other words, tap into yourself, boys and girls. Honor how you feel emotionally, spiritually, and physically, okay? Be kind and present with yourself. Be kind to yourself. We talked about this on the first segment. If you feel mashugan one day, feel mashugan. If you feel happy, feel happy. Be kind to yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Okay? Um, and healing and transformation, I love that word, we're going to come back to that in a minute, will happen, and here it is, where you're in control of yourself, if you let it. The healing and the transformation, though you can pray and ask God for the strength, we have free will, God's going to say, Tommy, Johnny, Sarah, Megan, it's up to you. I'm giving you the tools. You could have a box full of tools and a pile of wood, but if you don't start doing anything with it, it ain't going to turn into a house. So what Julia says here about the, the healing is what we want, but we're transformed. And I just said that a couple of minutes ago. There is no way you're going to go through an experience like what I went through. And there's some other people in this room, that guy's nodding his head, went through and not be transformed. I'm a different person today than I was four months ago. And that's okay. That's good. That means growth. Even though some of the changes sound negative, the transformation is still good because I'm not stuck. You can't drive a car that's parked. It's got to move. And so that transformation that she's talking about, being kind to yourself and going from fragility to resilience takes time. Some of you want it to happen too fast doesn't happen fast. If you had something good, it's not going to happen fast. And if something, someone jumps from something to something, then maybe they didn't have it so good. But if you had something good, it's, it's going to take time. We look at the prayer of St. Francis. We're, just, we're not going to go through the whole prayer. The, oh, this should be a mission statement for this show, boys and girls. It says, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Boom. So right there, your peace. So we're part of God's plan. That's how important we are. Like I said last week, just because we're not John, Paul, George, and Ringo doesn't mean we're less valuable. It says, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace, not make me an instrument of your pieces. What do we have when you have pieces? You have destruction, right? You break something, you have wars, there's pieces. But what it says here is, make, and if you don't forgive, then you have pieces. But it says, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. And it says, where there is hatred, let me so love. So it doesn't say let me give love. It says let me sow love. What does sow mean? To cultivate, to water, to fertilize, to turn the dirt, right? A lot of you are gardeners. It means to put time in. 
make me an instrument of your peace, and where there is hatred, let me sow love. We talked about what the Buddha said. If you're drinking poison, hoping for the other person to die, it's going to kill you. That hatred, that anger is going to kill you. You can be angry what happened to you, and we're going to talk about how to funnel that in a minute. But make me an instrument of your peace. So how do we get to forgiveness? Byron McGill says this, there is no love without forgiveness, and there is no forgiveness without love. Boom. You can't have it both ways. You can't say, I'm a loving individual, but I'm not talking to my brother-in-law. I'm a loving individual, but I broke up with my girlfriend, and I ain't talking to her. I don't care what happened. Revenge is a bad love. There's good love and bad love. Revenge is a bad love. So you cannot, what says right here, okay, it says, there is no love without forgiveness, and there is no forgiveness without love. That's how important love is. It can help you forgive. If you think you can do it the other way, I hate to say it, but T. Boz is going to tell you you're wrong. And this is where I've changed dramatically. Here's a great statement. Forget, and I learned this on retreat back in March. Forgiveness is giving up hope in the past. Boom. A lot of you are not forgiving someone because of what happened in the past. Forgiveness is giving, write this one down. Forgiveness is giving up hope in the past. It's happened. It's awful. It's wrong. But you're not going to change it. You're not going to change it by not forgiving and carrying around that anger. That hurt that hurt you can be healed if you let it, as Julia said. But if you keep sitting in the past, you're going to stay there, and the rest of the world is going to go by you. We look over here. Here's uh, six ways to get to forgiveness, all right? Get mad, okay? Get mad. That's okay. That's, uh, you know, that's why a lioness protects her cubs. Get mad. Feel hurt and grieve. We talked about that last week. So feel the hurt. Feel the pain. Acknowledge it. We talked about that, right? So same thing here with getting to forgiveness. Is your anger constructive or destructive? If your anger is telling you to go get, you know, uh, a mountain of dirt and pour it in someone's uh, car, then that's not going to be too good, all right? But if your anger is causing you to learn new things or to have the resiliency to show up at something where other people are and not cause a scene, then that's good, okay? So you want to you wanna identify, you wanna identify that. Don't worry. This is what people, where they get hung up with forgiveness. Don't worry. You are not saying the offense was okay. Boom, boom, boom. So if someone hurt you, if they deceived you, if they lied to you, they carried on. When you forgive them, you're not saying the offense was okay. The forgiveness is for you, not for them. Their judgment is from him above. You're not judging them when you forgive them. You're getting that crap all that yuck out of you. Because if you want to have a relationship, like we said, with someone else, we go right back to what Brian said. There is no forgiveness without love. There is no love without forgiveness. The next person is going to see right through you if you think you're going to fake it, saying how much you hate this person and, and you want revenge. You're never, you're never going to meet someone, okay? And then the other thing is practice stress management and relieving of stress. And remind yourself why you want this person in your life. For me personally, the person is a very, very good dancer. And when I square dance, I like to dance with the best. I love teaching the new students, but when I go to a dance, I want to be in a square with the A crowd. It's a better experience for me. It's a better experience for everyone else, and I dance better. This person is an excellent square dancer. So my ability to keep a nice relationship through this is to be able to go to these dances and enjoy the experience of dance. It won't be dinner parties. There won't be picnics. There won't be, you know, skipping stones on a lake. But I remind myself of the enjoyable times of dancing, and I'd like to keep that the way it is. To forgive, you got to set boundaries. I set the boundaries. I either make them strident or I loosen them up a little bit based on what is going on. I set the boundaries. You need to set boundaries, okay, with the person that hurt you or business partner or whatever. This doesn't really apply to widowship, but 
You need to I set the boundaries. I'm in control. If I want a little more chit chat, I open the gate. If I want less chit chat, I close the gate. The power is mine. We talked about that last week. Feeling powerless. Almighty God gives you the spirit. What did Belva Lockwood say? The spirit is bent but not broken. So set boundaries that you're comfortable with. It's going to be different for everyone. But in order to get to forgiveness, you got to set boundaries. Now, we're going to get to a very different exercise that we're going to do today. And I want all the students to get up, follow George into the real big room. When you come up the stairs, that big room, everybody get your rock, okay? And and they're all moving their chairs. And go out into the big room, follow George. He'll show you what we have over there. Those of you on Zoom could watch this. Okay. In this room, we have a big metal square can. And each of you all, well, there's um, 50, right, George? All around the can. Now, you've been hurt. This is your opportunity. Take that rock that's in your hand. Think of the person that hurt you. Think of whatever happened to you. And haul that rock that you're holding in your hand into that metal can and hit that person, if you will, when I count to three. One, two, three. I don't think anybody heard me. This is your opportunity. You've been hurt. You've been dragged through the cold. Your heart has been barbecued. Guy in the back is nodding. This woman is crying a little bit in front. This woman's crying. This is your opportunity. Take the rock that's in your hand and haul it into that can. You can even say the person's name as you're throwing a rock. It'll make you feel better. Take and wing it in there when I count to three. One, two, three. Nobody throwed a rock, did they? Why, ma'am? Why didn't you throw a rock? You haven't talked to your father in a year? Sir, why didn't you throw a rock? You just got divorced from your wife. Ma'am, you're the one that's crying. Why didn't you throw the rock? A guy you loved hurt you deeply. Everyone, let's come back into the classroom. George, filter in, filter in quick. We got to get to the end of the show. Now, on the back of the rock is a piece of tape. I want everybody to take tape off the rock. And you're going to see an inscription. And it says, John, chapter 8, verse 11. And they brought the adulterous woman to Jesus and said, we caught this woman in the very act of adultery. And in Mosaic law, it says that she should be stoned to death. See how women were so low class? What happened to the guy? You can't commit adultery by yourself. So the Mosaic law says to stone her to death. There's still people, come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And Jesus, riding in the sand, stands up, and he looks at them, and he says, any of you without sin, go ahead and cast the first stone at her. And they all drop the rock, just like all of you did. And by the way, when you leave today, everyone, hand in your rock. George has a little white cloth dealt for you that says, peace. And so... Jesus straightens up and he walks over to the woman and he says, woman, where are your accusers? Where have they gone? And she looks around and says, I don't know, sir. They left. And he looks her right in the eye like I'm looking at you. And he says to them, says to her, your accusers do not condemn you, nor do I. Your accusers do not condemn you, nor do I. My friends, it took a lot of work to get to that point. I want to thank my therapist, Bob, for big work in helping me, all of my friends, family. We look at Acts chapter 7, verse 20. And it says, do not hold this sin against them. If you're holding that sin against them, 
you'll never heal. As Julia said, you'll never be transformed. You'll never be an instrument of peace. Nor do I. Our takeaway today, the very famous one actually, it's my late wife's birthday, John 3.16. And it says, for God so loved the world that he sent his only son, not to condemn it, but to redeem it. We are a people that condemn and judge and point the finger over and over again. I'm not diminishing the hurt that you feel, the pain. We talked about this, emotional healing. At least when you break a bone, you could see where the pain is coming from. With this, your mishugana, your head, your stomach, your back, right? I'm not diminishing that. But that pain will never ever, ever leave you if you don't look at that person and say, where are your accusers? They don't condemn you, nor do I. God gave his only son not to condemn the world, but to redeem it. And if we take that road, if we take that higher road, it ain't easy. It's all uphill, boys and girls. Trust me, I've been on it. There's no downhill slope in this. It's all uphill. Okay? But by not condemning people and showing what we are, then you will show to that person what love, real love, really looks like. By living the life that I'm hoping you can live through these three segments, you can show that person that hurt you what love, real love, It says in scripture, only a fool chases fantasy. Some people have chased the fantasy, but you can show that person what real love looks like, the way God sees us. Don't you think Jesus' heart is broken every time we sin, he's hanging on that cross? But he gives us another chance. God's mercy is anew every day. Show that person what real love looks like. There's a beautiful song I'm not going to do the usual close. It's not appropriate for today. Again, I want to thank George for your help. Stan, Jack Williams, for allowing me to share my heart and my story with all of you. It seemed to have helped a lot of you. Got a lot of nice reviews. Jack is going to go into the song, and I will be back next week, and we'll see all of you here in the upper classroom. Thank you, Jack Williams. Thank all of you, and we will see you next week. Jack, play the song.